Dracaris. It's too easy. There's no way you got him. He's a Targaryen. He's gotta be a Targaryen. Has to be. Are you gonna sneak up on him, John? Who is this dude? Are we gonna learn more about him? Ask him, John. Ask him who he is. Who are you? What are you doing here? What do you want? These are things we ask. Oh god, is he raising the dead? for but they're just trying to continue to move south Even I want to quit. Even I want to give up. Of course. No more arrows. You're out. Come on, Reek. Alright, he's been all Theon this episode. Total Theon. Don't do it. No, 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 no. No. <sighs> oh, guys. You're losing. At, at this point, Captain Marvel shows up, or someone shows up to turn the, turn the battle tide. But in Thrones, I don't know who that is. Yara? Cersei? They are not coming. Bran seems like the wild card who could turn the battle somehow. Screams in battle better than Bran. Ah, winter is here. Good job, Theon. Way to protect Bran. Oh man, is this it? Good man. Thank you.
guys gonna kiss? Are you kidding me? She succeeded? She did it? You did it? <laughs> Jora, is it your time? <laughs> oh, but Danny, it was his time. Hound lives? Body count is light in this episode. She's gonna get naked? Amongst all the bodies? Davos gonna kill her? She's gonna get naked. She's gonna be the old lady. That's it? That's all she had to give? That was it? She gave it her all? Okay, friends, let's discuss everything that just happened in the Battle of Winterfell. And I'm gonna be the spoil sport that says, in the grand scheme of things, when we're ranking these alongside um, Hard Home or the Battle of Bastards, this one wasn't even close. Body count was light, which is fine. I mean, it's not like I need major characters to essentially die, but you have the likes of Ed and Beric, Lady Mormont, fan favorite. I get it, right? But none of the heavy hitters. That a lot of people predicted going into this episode. Jamie lives, Brienne lives. You get Jora bowing out. Danny's upset. But are we? Red Priestess? Sure. I guess. I mean, the big one's the Night King. Let's start with the big surprise, which is that the Night King dies. Um, because for the, the bulk of this fight, the living, man, they are losing. They are just getting pummeled. The dead were mowing them down uh, and just uh, like coming at them like in, in a World War Z type fashion. Like the zombies in World War Z overrun you. Melisandre, she, she does say, I'll be dead before dawn, but she kind of just like lightly fulfills that prophecy. There's nothing that, that essentially kills her. She's able to light the trench, but there's no real need for that. So that was kind of odd. Um, the dead were just dominant and we saw like just multiple like Arya was the best at sort of fighting them in close quarters Arya was sort of dominating in close quarters her and her new weapon were unbelievable and it's fitting I suppose that Arya is the one that takes out the Night King because you know she gets that new weapon sort of designed for her and uses it to her advantage she's able to take out the Night King with it that was pretty staggering 
I can't. I'm, I'm trying to process really quickly the fact that the Night King has been decimated because, and immediately as soon as they take the Night King out, his forces fall. The the way the episode was directed, there's very little dialogue. Like there's there's maybe 25 to 30 lines of dialogue in the entire episode, which is effective. I mean, they try to really milk tension out of silence. And it's a good way to do it. Um, It's different than some of the other battle scenes that we've seen in this show. Uh, Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it just wasn't it wasn't as good. Now maybe I'm gonna be end up being in the minority on this one, but I'm going on record right after watching it. It's just saying that I just didn't think it played out quite as well in it quite as shocking way as a hard home and the Battle of the Bastards, which I felt like I had more emotion invested in what was happening in those now the army of the dead like again they were overwhelming there's a moment where the hound essentially just checks out and he's like we're fighting death his quote was we're fighting death you can't beat death he's overwhelmed he can't take it anymore and i felt his pain like i really thought that the living were getting overwhelmed it's interesting that the the whites kind of do go down with sort of just one shot right like one good shot i mean i know they're using dragonstone and that that as a weapon uh, is an effective way to take them out. But there's just too many of them. Like there's a great scene where Arya is kind of avoiding the zombies. Like she's she's silently moving around and doing what she can to stay out of their path. And uh, even in doing that for quite so long, she eventually gets to the point where she has to just run from them. Because there's just too many of them. And they just come barreling at her. And that's the, the takeaway is that there's just so many. Bran kind of ravens out. He three-eyed Raven wargs his way away and he goes to go sort of spy on the Night King, but nothing really comes of that. There's a big takeaway from this episode that uh, I found to be the, the dragon fight, the stuff happening in the sky sucked for like an hour. It wasn't it wasn't good. Um, you couldn't really tell what was happening. It was dark. There were a few shots that pulled back and showed like the grand scope of all of it. There was the ground fight and the air fight, right? And the ground fight was pretty effective. Like... Tormund and Jamie and Brienne, they were all fighting to the death. Like they were wielding all of their weapons and they were taking the, the, the Night King's army out. Every time we cut to the sort of air battle, all that effectively did was take Danny and John out of the fight for the most part because I couldn't tell what was happening in that. That was not as effective as the episode wanted it to be. Um, and there was a big reveal in that Danny blasts the Night King. They get the Night King off of his dragon and they, they douse him in flames and he doesn't burn. Which, to me, um, suggests Targaryen roots to him, right? But ultimately, nothing comes of it. Man, I'm not going to throw the word disappointed out, but this episode didn't play out the way that I hoped that it would. And, you know, this is my fault, its fault. I don't know. That's okay. That's okay, we got three more episodes to go. What do you do for the rest of your show? What do you do? Is the rest of the show who takes over the throne? Is the rest of the show Cersei and King's Landing? Is the Night King truly done? Have we eliminated that threat with such a low body count along the way? You left a lot of people. People who we thought were going to be out. People like the Hound. People like Tormund. People like Brienne. People like Jaime. People like even Danny and John, who we thought might not make it past this episode. But how do I how do I rank this episode overall? Pretty good. Pretty good. You guys can crush me in the comments if you want to. I'll be real curious to find out how everybody feels. Does everybody agree? Did everyone love this? Am I alone on an island? All right, we have three episodes left to go, uh, which means we'll be back at this next Sunday night. You don't want to miss it, so go down, hit subscribe, turn on your notifications, and the minute that we post our reaction video to episode four of season eight, you guys will be alerted to it. Again, I will try to do some sort of speculation video midweek to let you guys know how I think the rest of the season is going to go. But this one didn't play out the way that I expected it to. So uh, so listen, we're all just sort of spitballing into the wind. And um, you can also join me spitballing into the wind by going down to the comment section, telling us what you thought of not only this episode, but where you think that the story is going to go from here. I cannot wait to hear from all of you, my Game of Thrones family, as we prepare for episode four of season eight, together here at Cinema Blend.